Early Muslim scholars admit that verses of the original Quran were forgotten, canceled, lost, overlooked, modified, altered, and edited. Some were even eaten by a sheep. Clearly, the creation of the Quran and its preservation was managed and directed by humans. Today, we are going to highlight to you what did early Muslim scholars say when it comes to the Quran and its preservation. With me, of course, uh, to uh, here in studio to unpack all of that for us is Dr. Jay Smith. Dr. Jay, welcome back. Thank you. So it's good that we do a comparative. What they're saying today isn't the same as what they used to say. So let's go right into it and let's look at the first slide. And this comes from Ibn Abi Daud, uh, Kitab al-Masafif, and he says this, many of the passages of the Quran that were sent down were known by those who died on the day of Yamama, but they were not known by those who survived them, nor were they written down, nor had Abu Bakr, that's the caliph, Umar and Uthman, the other two caliphs, by that time collected the Quran, nor were they found with even one person after them. So this is Ibn Abi Dawud writing in the ninth century, and he's very clear that some of the verses were lost. And he's a very well known, and his work on the Masahif is, is known as well. Now let's go to another one who's from this. Well, no, this is actually Asuyuti. Asuyuti is from the 16th century, writing back concerning what he has, knows from the Islamic tradition. And this is what he says. Mm -hmm. It is reported from Ismail ibn Ibrahim, from Ayub, from Nahr, these are known as Isnad, uh, from Ibn Umar, who said, let none of you say, I have acquired the whole of the Quran. How does he know what all of it is when much of the Quran has disappeared? Rather, let him say, I have acquired what has survived. Right, and this is the son of Omar, the second caliph, by the way. Isn't that fascinating? Look what he's yeah. admitting. Yeah. So, some verses have disappeared, according to him. Now we come to Sahih Muslim, second only to al-Buhari in importance amongst the Hadith uh, compilers. So again, he died in 875. This is the late 9th century. This is very early. And he says this, We used to recite a surah which resembled in length and severity the surah Bar'at. I have, however, forgotten it, with the exception of this, which I remember out of it. And this is what it is. If there were two valleys full of riches for the son of Adam, he would long for a third valley, and nothing would fill the stomach of the son of Adam but dust. This is a pretty large amount that had been lost. So you can see some of this had been forgotten, according to Sahih Muslim, second only to al-Buhari in importance. Well, let's now go to al-Buhari, because he's the most important. He is sahih, he is perfect, there is no error, and this is what he said. We used to read a verse of the Quran revealed in their connection, but later the verse was canceled, and this is what it was. Convey to our people on our behalf the information that we have met our Lord, and he is pleased with us and has made us pleased. Now, he died in 870, so this is the late 9th century again, and he's saying that some verses were canceled. Here's another one by him. And this is the verse that we were talking about in a previous episode. This is the verse on stoning. Right, a rajm. Rajm. Yeah. Allah sent Muhammad with the truth and revealed the holy book to him. And among what Allah revealed was the verse of the rajm, stoning of married persons, male and female, who commit adultery. And we did recite this verse and understood and memorize it. Allah's apostle did carry out the punishment of stoning, and so did we after him. Who's saying this? This is Abu Bakr. This is Omar. Oh, is it Umar? Sorry. Yeah. Umar is referring to Umar is really upset with this. Yeah. I am afraid that after a long time has passed, somebody will say, by Allah, we do not find the verse of Rajab in Allah's book. And thus they will go astray by leaving an obligation which Allah has revealed. So here is Umar remonstrating, saying, listen. We used to stone the prophet stone, but now I look in the book, and this verse on Rajam, which is in stoning, has now been changed to a hundred lashes. So he's saying, what is the justification for it? That's Absolutely. what he's saying. Yeah. They're going to say, not only us, others are going to say someone's changed it. So he is really bringing out something that is, uh, for obviously, that would be that is troublesome. In this case, he, the punishment itself is what he's more worried about. And if you look in chapter 24, verse 2, you will see it's a hundred lashes now. Mm -hmm. Rajam has been taken out. Kuzaiba ibn Thabit, according to Ibn Abi Dawud, said, I see you have overlooked two verses and have not written them. They said, and which are they? He replied, I had it directly, automatically, spontaneously, from the Messenger of Allah. And that's chapter 9, verse 128 that we saw about earlier. 
Uthman said, I bear witness that these verses are from Allah. So it looked like they overlooked some by accident. And thank God that Uthman realized that this had been overlooked and needed to put them back again. So it's very clear, according to Ibn Abi Dawud, that parts of the Quran had been overlooked. We get back to Muatta ibn Malik. This Look at the dates again. This is the late 8th century now. Abu Yunus, he says, Freedmen of Aisha, mother of the believers, reported, Aisha ordered me to translate the Holy Quran and asked me to let her know when I should write at the verse. Go ahead and read that if you can read that because I don't want to desecrate it. Uh, lilla, uh, you mean the, the one that it's written in Arabic? It's actually written in English. It's transliteration in right. English. But you can do with better pronunciation than I do. Uh, well, uh, I mean, it's uh, hard for me, to be honest with you, uh, to read it this way because I don't want to butcher it also and people might think we're trying to change things. Okay, you, you have... can read it for yourself, people. You can see it on there. Yeah. Have to Allah so I want to make sure I want to read it from the Arabic, actually. Yeah. Kumu so it says, Havadu Salati was Salati wa al Wusta. Yeah, Hafidu ala Salati was Salati al Wusta. Uh, so it's talking here about the middle prayer, middle prayer, which uh, perceived to be Salat al-Asr, you know, technically speaking. You have two prayers before it, two prayers after it. Okay, then he says, yeah. when I arrived at this verse, I informed her and she ordered, now remember, this is a woman, ordered, write it this way instead. And there you can see, we're not going to do it again because we don't want to desecrate it. She added that she had heard it so from the Apostle, Apostle of Allah. So here you have a woman who changed it. This is, of course, the favored wife of Muhammad, but a woman is able to change it, according to Muatta ibn Malik in the late 8th century. Ibn Abi Dawi that we talked about earlier, then also talked about Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf. We're going to talk about quite a bit about him later on mm -hmm. in further episodes. Made 11 modifications. This is just according to Ibn Abi Dawud in the reading of the Uthmanic text. In Al-Baqarah, Surah 2, uh, 259, it originally read this, but it has been changed to that. In Malmaida, Surah 4, 5, verse 48, it usually read this. Now it has been altered to that. So you can see in every case, you may change after may change after may change. Actually, this is just one testimony of this. We're going to see many more testimonies of this coming later. Lots of changes that happen with uh, Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf. So there you find modification according to Ibn Dawud. And then we have substitution. But Allah said, according to Sahih Buhari, none of our revelations do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, but we substitute something better or similar, which reflects what we see in the Quran itself in chapter 2, in verse 106, yeah. chapter 16, verse 101. That's called the law of abrogation. Mm -hmm. So al Buhari was very clear that this was quite normal. This went on piecemeal all the time. Changes were solved, verses were substituted. And we'll end with this one, Sunan ibn Majah. We could do many more. Let's just end with this one. It was narrated that Aisha said, now here's Aisha again, the verse of stoning and of breastfeeding an adult ten times. What's this all about, this breastfeeding of adults? You know what this is referring to? Well, you know, uh, according to Islamic Sharia law, uh, if a person was breastfed by a woman, meaning she nursed that person. A, a, a male. Yes, not exactly. A, boy. A, a male, exactly. In this case, the male becomes almost like a, a son. To that woman. In other words, if he walks in uh, in the house and she is not covering her head with hijab, it's okay because he's like a son. But if that person is not related to her directly or was not nursed, breastfed by her, then he is he not up. allowed to be there. And therefore, the accusation could fly and say, oh, what is he doing there? And are you like uh, committing adultery and all that kind of stuff? So Aisha yeah. is, is fed up and tired with breastfeeding all these guys that want to come visit her. So what does he do? This paper was was with me under my pillow when the messenger of Allah died. We were preoccupied with his death and a tame sheep came and ate it, uh, which is fortunate for her. So it looks like this sheep ate part of the Quran, the one on stoning and also on breastfeeding, according to Sunan Ibn Majah. Yeah. Now, let's put that all together. And what do we come up with? Yeah. Let's summarize it real quickly. So here you have lost, then you have disappeared, you have forgotten, you have canceled, you have missing. You have overlooked, you have changed, modified, substituted, and eaten by sheep. Now tell me, folks, does this sound like a book which was compiled perfectly and completely like the earlier, uh, I mean, the all scholars are today are saying? Does this not imply intentional human intervention right through its initial compilation? According to the earliest scholars, look at all that litany of changes and changes and changes and changes that happened. And then this is the dilemma, by the way. If modern scholars are going to now discredit these early accounts, then they're admitting that these early accounts were fabricated. 
or has a problem or were corrupted. So they have an issue anywhere you look at it. And today, there are many Quranic manuscripts that have been unearthed, and they show also fluidity in the process of transmitting the Quran. Enormous fluidity. And why yeah. do you have fluidity? Because it's human-made. Whenever exactly. humans are a part of an, of an operation, there is going to be manuscript variants, there are going to be scribal errors, there are going to be changes, there are going to be manipulations, accretions, deletions. This is typical of anything that's human-made proving that this is as human-made a document as, as any other, and this is exactly what Shoemaker is trying to get at. That's true. And I would argue that uh, if you were to meet today with these early Islamic scholars, they would look at you and say, so, if this manuscript read this way, and that tafsir said that that reader read it this way, I don't see any problem. They weren't really dogmatic about the issues as we see today. Okay. And next time? What Next gonna time, we're going to look at what we call the Noldekishwalian paradigm. This is the paradigm that Shoemaker wants to say became the paradigm that was normative for all of the schools here in the United States and Europe. What are we talking about, this Noldekishwalian paradigm? Wonderful. Tune in, you'll see what we're talking about. Thank you, as always. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Hopefully, you can join us next time. Until then, have a blessed day. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel Sierra International and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.